Hey everybody, it's time to start talking about related rates. This topic can be very challenging, so it's very important that you watch all the videos to support the concept. You're going to find that I cover the interesting concepts of the derivative process, but you're also going to discover that there are going to be some geometry as well as some trigonometry that you might need to review in order to complete some of these exercises. Because these are real world application problems, we have to bring in some other resources like geometry and trigonometry to talk about situations that might actually come up. So here's our first scenario. Suppose we are pumping air into a spherical balloon. So remember spherical balloon means circular balloon. It's actually a little 2D picture. But remember this is a 3D object. So there's the balloon that we're blowing up. You're pumping air into it. Both the volume and radius of the balloon are increasing over time. Right? So when you blow it up, the balloon's getting bigger. So the radius of the balloon is getting bigger and the volume is getting bigger. If V is the volume and R is the radius of the balloon at an instant of time T, think about that. V and R depend on time. So think of V and R as being functions of time. So as time goes on, the volume is getting bigger. As the time goes on, the radius is getting bigger. Alright, so if they are thought of in that way, then the equation v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed from geometry is still applicable here. But think of v and r as changing over time. This is just one particular instant of time. What is the relationship between the rate of change v and r with respect to time t? So this concept, rate of change, this is something we've talked about before. This is just a fancy way of saying the derivative. But we want the derivative with respect to a certain variable, with respect to time. So how do we take a derivative with respect to a particular variable? Well, all of this is telling us that we need to take the derivative of the relationship between V and R, this equation right here is the relationship between V and R. We need to take the derivative of that with respect to time. And we can do this using implicit differentiation because we're thinking about V and R as being functions of time. So taking the derivative with respect to time makes sense. Only because they're functions with respect to time. So let's copy down what we need to do. So we have our relationship between the two variables that we're interested in. And what we want to find is the relationship between the rate of change of V with respect to time and the rate of change of R with respect to time. So to do that, we need to take the derivative with respect to time. So d dt of the V and d dt of the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, it's just one variable V. So treat this as we were doing the Y with implicit. We would write dy dt, but here, like I warned you, the variables are different but it's still the same concept. So we end up with the derivative of V with respect to T, dV dt. This right here is the rate of change of V with respect to, WRT with respect to time. That's what we're interested in, one of them. So then we write equals. On the other side, we're gonna take the derivative using our derivative rules and the implicit process. So 4 thirds pi is a constant multiple, so that just hangs out. So really, we just need to take the derivative of the r cubed with respect to t. So do your power rule. 3 comes down, r to 1 power less, times the derivative of the r with respect to t. So right here, we have dr dt. This is the rate of change. of r, the radius, with respect to time t. So what is this saying? This is saying that a particular moment in time, you know your radius. Plug in your radius. Well, if you know the rate of change of v, you can plug that in and find the rate of change of r. If you know the rate of change of r, then you know the rate of change of v. You have to kind of know one to know the other, but it does tell you what the relationship between them is. So if we clean this up just a wee bit, let's cancel the threes out. So it says the rate of change of the volume is related to the rate of change of the radius by this value here, 4 pi r squared. 
So if you multiply the rate of change of the radius by this value, you get the rate of change of the volume. And that's the relationship between them. So that's what it asks us to find, and that's how you would do it. So implicit is very important here. Now, whoops, that is the first part. Let's continue it here. Determine how fast the radius is increasing. Remember, how fast? This is usually talking about a derivative. So in this case, how fast the radius is increasing, this is the derivative of r with respect to time. If you're talking about a speed, you need it with respect to time on the bottom. So how fast is a hint, and how fast the radius is saying the derivative of r with respect to t. All right, and they're interested at a particular instant when r is equal to 3. So in this case, they don't give us a time. They give us a um, particular dimension. Remember, your balloon is growing. So over time, r is changing. So at one particular instant, r is 3. We're not interested in bigger than three or smaller than three. We're interested in that one instant. So instead of giving us a time, they're giving us an event to use to dictate what we're trying to solve for. All right, so determine how fast the radius is changing when r is three, and if the volume of air is increasing, volume is increasing, that's a rate of change there. So they're telling us that the rate of change of the volume is increasing at a rate of 300 cubic inches, so inches cubed per minute. So let's make sure that matches the dimensions, or the, yeah, the measurements we had before. So, uh, let's see. Volume, time. Okay, so R is in inches, and V is in inches. So yes, um, in general, our formula was for any dimensions. It was uh, very in general case, but now that we have these values here, they do match. They're both inches, so we're good to go. All right, so how do we do this? How do we find dr dt at the particular moment in time when r is 3 and the rate of change of volume is 300 cubic inches per minute? Well, we need the relationship. Well, that's what this is. This is the re the relation between the related between the rates. Therefore, we call them related rates. They're related to each other by this equation. So let's copy that down. dv dt is equal to 4 pi r squared dr dt. We know dv dt, and we know the particular r, so we can solve for dr dt. So 300 equals 4 pi times our r, which is 3 squared dr dt. We divide by 4 pi r squared. both sides. You could work that out if you wanted to, but I'm going to be canceling, so. So 300 divided by 3, that would leave me with 100, with 1, 3 on the bottom. 100 divided by 4, that leaves me with 25. So we end up with dr dt is equal to 25 divided by 3 pi. And we can punch that into our calculator. So 25 divided by 3 pi equals 2.653. All right. Now at this point, we would write our rate, our units. So we've mentioned it briefly before. When you talk about the units of a rate of change, it's the units of the top, so the units of radius, which would be inches, and the units of the bottom time, which would be minutes. So our rate of change here is inches per minute. And there you go. So at the particular moment when our balloon has a radius of 3 and the volume is changing at 300 cubic inches per minute, this is the corresponding rate of change for your radius. So that was one example of how we work with rates, related rates. And here are some steps to help you out. So these are in your notes if you want to um, reference them as you're doing your homework. Basically, what we did. Well, I didn't have to draw the picture because it was already provided. But draw a picture. Write down what you're given. Pull the things out of your problem that you're being provided, just like we did. Remember when we said, here, let me back up. We said rate of change is another word for derivative. With respect to time, that told us the derivative with respect to time. Down here we said how fast. 
That's just a rate of change. Increasing means you have a rate of change. All those pieces you have to pull out of your words so that you can use them. Sometimes you need to draw the picture and label your picture. You'll see some examples of that. All right, so draw a picture and pick variables and cons variables to name. Use T for time. Write down any information you have, numerical. Write down what you're asked to find. So I wrote down we're asked to find DRDT, the rate of change of the radius. Write the equation that relates the variables. So we had a V and an R. And this problem that gave us the equation that relates them. Sometimes they won't. Now, I don't expect you guys to have every geometry formula memorized, but some of the basics like Pythagorean and the trig um, Sokotoa, I expect you to have those. Most of the time, we'll provide you anything that's a little bit more difficult. You might see in your homework a couple where you have to go do some research. Just Google it and find it. But on the actual exam, I would expect us to provide you with an equation like this one here. So, ah, oops. Um, so in this problem, we used a geometry equation that v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. I wouldn't expect you to memorize that. I would provide that to you on a test. All right, what else? After you have your equation relating your variables, then take the derivative, plug in, take the derivative first, then plug in everything you know at that particular moment you're interested in, and then finally solve. All right, so that's the first example that I have for you. Make sure you watch all the examples. Every single one is important. Every single one has something interesting that you might need. So I'll see you in the next video.